Yo, what's up guys? I'm Yannick from the Produce School and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create three essential bases for deep and melodic house. The sounds that I will be creating in this video have been used by industry leading artists and have been proven to work in so many tracks. Let's get to work and create some amazing bass sounds. If you're looking for more presets like the ones I'm creating in this video, then make sure to check out our brand new Deep House Pack Illusion, which has a lot of similar presets in there, as well as samples, project files, and even vocals. If you want to check it out, click the link over here, or simply go to our website, theproduceschool.com. The first bass that I'm going to show you is this. It's also known as a dunk bass and we'll create it from scratch and I will show you everything about the sound and how it's made. This dunk bass is a perfect example of FM synthesis and for that you will need two things. One of them is a carrier oscillator which is the main oscillator and then you need a second oscillator which is used to modulate uh, the first oscillator. Uh, we're going to be doing that with two sine waves. Let's set this to a sine wave. Let's lower down two octaves to get a bass sound. Just a pure uh, sine wave. Let's also lower down the random phase for it. And then we're going to use another sine wave over here in oscillator B. Lower down the level of it and put it down one octave. Now we still have this clean sine wave. But let's go into the warp section of uh, oscillator A and select FM from B which is oscillator B. And let's start dragging up this knob. It's creating this unique metallic sound, um, which is perfect for this bass. Let's put it to around 48%. We can modulate this later on, but let's leave it like this for now. I'm going to use envelope one to shape the sound a bit more. Let's lower down the sustain like this and the decay as well. So you get a more plucky sound and let's also increase the release a little bit. Then let's enable the filter. Let's select the MGLO 18 filter. And now we're going to modulate the filter cutoff with envelope one. So drag it on top of there like this. Drag it down, something like this. Let's decrease the decay a little bit more so we get a more plucky sound. Let's increase the drive of the filler as well. You can also choose to add some more punch to the sound. And I'm going to do that by creating a really short envelope with envelope 2. So lower down the sustain all the way and a decay of time of around like 50 milliseconds that should do. And then I'm going to um, link the envelope 2 to the course pitch of oscillator A, which is the main oscillator. And set it to one direction like this. And now there's a really fast envelope going on on the pitch. So if I put up the decay, you can hear that the pitch is going down. But we want to make this really fast so it creates a kind of click to the sound. And now we can add a few effects like dimension to make it a little bit wider. So put up the mix and the size as well. You can also choose to add a little bit of reverb but make sure the size is small and the decay as well. And put up the low cut so it doesn't have any really low frequencies in the reverb. Otherwise, it might get muddy in your mix. That's it for the dunk bass. Here's it one more time. second bass sound that I'm going to show you is this really warm kind of analog sounding bass which sounds like this you 
You can hear this sound in a lot of Deep House tracks by artists like Medusa. They use this sound a lot in their tracks. Um, let's init the preset. And let's start creating it from scratch. For this bass sound, I'm going to use the wavetable called Basic Mini. And let's just leave the wavetable position like this. Put it two octaves down for oscillator A. So we have more like a bass sound. Then let's use the same uh, wavetable for oscillator B. Also put it two octaves down. What I'm going to do now is to detune the sound. You can do this by going to the unison of oscillator A, putting it up and adding some detune. But there's also another way to do it, which creates a more analog feel to the sound. Put it back to one voice for oscillator A. By adjusting the fine tune of each oscillator separately, you can create this really nice analog sounding detune. So let's put the fine tune down for oscillator A, something like that, and put it up for oscillator B. Right now it's completely mono, but to make it a little bit wider, I'm going to use the pen knob of each oscillator to make it wider. So for oscillator A pen, let's set it to around minus 15. Let's shape the sound a little bit more by using envelope 1. I lower down the sustain like this, add some decay and release. Now let's enable the filler for both oscillators. So select B here as well. Let's use MGLO 18. And then link envelope 1 to the filter cutoff. Put it one way. Let's increase the drive of the filter a little bit. If you like, you can add some noise to the sound by going to the noise section and using one of the white noises in there. Let's use this G60 and enable it in the filter as well. It adds a nice analog touch to the sound. Now let's add a few effects like chorus to make it a little bit wider. Let's just put the wet level up. Around 30, 40. And you can also choose to add a little bit of reverb. Make sure to cut out the low end. Then the third bass that I'm going to show you is this warm, plucky bass sound, which goes like this. Let's init the preset and create it from scratch. We're going to be using the Juno wavetables you can find over here in the factory wavetables of Serum. And let's set the wavetable position to a saw wave. So right now it's a square wave and let's set it to the next one, which is a saw wave. Lower it down two octaves. And let's enable oscillator B as well. It's also the Juno wavetable, but let's drag up the wavetable position and use this one, which is a kind of square wave. Uh, lower down two octaves like this. And let's drag down the level so you can barely hear it. Now I'm going to shape uh, the bass sound with envelope one. Let's drag down the sustain and drag down the decay as well. Something like this will do. And let's add a little bit of release. Now enable the filter and use MGLO24, which is a pretty steep filter. Make sure to enable oscillator B and the noise as well. And now let's link envelope 1 to the filter cutoff. So create this nice filter envelope. Increase the filter drive. Let's add some noise to the sound. Enable the noise oscillator 
and let's go for G106, this one. So when you open up the filler cutoff, you can hear a little bit of noise, which is great. Let's use the same technique that we used for the first bass in this video, which is using a really short envelope to modulate the pitch of the oscillator to get this punchy um, effect. Let's slow down sustain all the way and create a really short shape with the decay time around 20 or 15 milliseconds. And let's link this envelope 2 to the chorus pitch of both oscillators. Something like this. And now it adds a little bit of punch to the bass sound. Then for the effects Let's enable the dimension to add a little bit of room to the sound. Let's decrease the size. It also makes it a little bit wider in the mix. Let's also add distortion to make the sound a little bit warmer. Decrease the wet level. Adds a little bit of those nice upper harmonics which also makes it a little bit more easier for the bass to cut through the mix. Of course, you can also do this in like the real post-processing in the mixer. But for now, I'm just staying inside of Serum to make it a little bit more easy for you guys. Let's add a little bit of chorus as well. Put up the chorus filter like this and let's lower down the depth. And let's start increasing the mix. A little bit of reverb, low down the size and the decay, and increase the low cut. And that's basically it for the sound. You can also choose to open up the cutoff a little bit more, so you get a less deep sound and a more plucky saw sound. That were the three essential deep house bases that I want to show you in this video. If you have any questions about particular things uh, in the sound design process, let me know and I will try to get back to you in the comments and help you on there. Make sure to follow us on Instagram because we are posting a lot of valuable content on there for music producers, which are like tips, tricks and that kind of stuff. So follow us on there as well. For now, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video.